We know that determining child support awards can be complicated, particularly when there are multiple income sources involved for one or both parties. But how do courts ensure equitability for children with the myriad of factors involved? The Connecticut case of Tuckman v. Tuckman examines this question in the context of the critical role played by state child support guidelines. Craig and Karen Tuckman married in 1990 and had two children. In 2006, Craig filed for divorce. At the time, the couple had substantial income and assets. Craig made over a million dollars annually, and Karen made a little over half a million in 2005 and a little under a million the following year. Karen's assets also included ownership interests in an S corporation and an investment partnership. Both generated substantial incomes. In 2009, the trial court dissolved the Tuckman's marriage and issued its associated financial orders, including a $250 monthly child support award per child to be paid by Craig to Karen. Karen filed a motion for articulation in which she requested the court's net income calculations for both parties, as well as clarification regarding whether the court accepted the parties' child support calculation worksheets. The court neglected to address her requests. Karen appealed, claiming the court abused its discretion and improperly awarded her an insufficient child support amount. The appellate court agreed and reversed the lower court finding the trial court abused its discretion when it failed to follow state guidelines in determining the child support award. Craig appealed. 